Hi, I'm Paul DeBartolomeo. Welcome to Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. In this segment, I'm going to discuss conventional forcible entry, specifically how to properly set the halogen when forcing an inward opening door. So when we talk about forcing an inward opening door conventionally, I was always taught some very specific positioning techniques that we apply to every door we force. All right. Uh, when we go to set the forks, we want the bevel side of the halogen on the door. Okay. And we want our body on the door. Okay. My shoulder's going to be to the door and the bevel's going to be to the door. I want my body to the door so that I can watch the forks throughout the progression of this process of me setting them. Okay, so when I'm standing here, I have a good line of sight on the forks. I also have my shoulder on the door, my foot on the door, so I'm kind of taking a lot of the spring or reverberation out of the door as the striking member is driving the tool in. Okay, so, you know, I can kind of brace the door, which is going to effectively get the tool set quicker. All right, so those are two main reasons. Okay, if I were to stand on the outside of the tool in the setting process, right, now for me to monitor those forks as they come from like the 45 degree angle out to 90, I have to continually lean my head into the strike zone. If the striking member misses the head of the halogen, he's probably going to hit my head, which could be a problem. So again, just remember, shoulder to the door, bevel of the tool to the door. Right? Why do I go bevel to the door? It has to do with forcing the door once the tool is set. Once I get this tool set to depth, which we're going to talk about in a moment, I want to force the entire tool over to the door. Right? One clean motion all the way over. When I have the tool bevel to the door, it allows me to get that full throw here, which is going to maximize my leverage. If I cheat and I go bevel to the frame, when I go to force, my tool bottoms out when the adz hits the door. That's six inches of travel that I lose, all right? Typically, that lock is going to fail in those final six inches. So I'm really cheating myself in terms of leverage by going bevel to the frame, all right? So again, bevel to the door, shoulder to the door. When we talk about setting the tool to depth, all right, we want to drive the forks in between the door and the frame until the arch, right, where the two forks come together, we put a little cut on ours right up here by the arch, so that's a little bit of a depth gauge. We want to get this set on the inside edge of the doorstop. All right? When the guys come up and actually force this door, we're going to show you exactly where that has to line up. And again, that has to do with maximizing the leverage when we go to force this door. All right, so just a couple other things on positioning, you know, in preparation for forcing this inward opening door, all right? Uh, we're going to set up six inches above or below the lock that we're attacking, all right? So in a minute, the guys are going to come in and actually force this door, but, you know, my work area is going to be referenced around this lock here. This is the lock that's going to be engaged. So when I gap the door, you know, I'm going to be six inches above the lock to gap it. I'm going to be six inches above the lock to set the tool. Remember, I'm going to have my shoulder to the door, and I'm going to have bevel to the door to go after this particular lock. All right, so we're going to bring the boys in now. They're going to force this door real time, and we're going to talk a little bit about the nuances as far as tool placement and setting depth of the forks in order to really maximize the most out of our tool and leverage to fail that lock. All right, so we got the halogen set on the door and we're ready to force it, but I just kind of want to review what we talked about earlier, the proper set depth here, right? And as we see, firefighter Riggett called for the stop. The arch of the forks here, the cut on the top of the, the fork, is in line with the inside edge of the door stop here, right? That's our landmark for setting the, the tool on this inward opening door. Now we're going to go take a walk around the inside and kind of see the cause and effect of why we set the tool to that depth. All right, so we have a unique opportunity here to kind of get an inside view 
uh, with this conventional forcible entry. All right? And we talked about our set point, and this is kind of what happens with the forks as they come through the door, and why we set it to the, to the edge of the doorstop there, the inside edge of the doorstop. What we're trying to do is get these forks wrapped around the frame. All right? And the, the edge of that door frame there is going to become a pivot point or a fulcrum. Okay, so now as the, the guys start to force the door, right, and push in on the tool, we start to see that pivot off the fulcrum there, right? We're increasing leverage, which is going to have a direct effect on our force, which is going to help us to ultimately fail this lock. All right, so we do see the importance of, of how we set that tool to depth in order to maximize the principles of physics here. All right, so our tool is set. The firefighters are now ready to force this door. So we're going to summarize some of the things we talked about today in this segment. Uh, we talked about conventional forcible entry, specifically how we position our tool on the door, how we position ourselves on the door. Right? Remember, six inches above or below the lock. We want the bevel side of the halogen to the door, right? so we maximize travel when we go to force. We want our shoulder to the door. All right? uh, it's going to improve my view on the forks as I set the tool, and it's also going to allow me to you know, put a little weight into the door to take away some of that bounce back as we go to set the tool. All right? Another problem we run into out in the field, oftentimes we have a door down the end of a hallway. Right? In this instance, the locks are on the left side of the door, there's going to be a wall out here, right? So it's going to be virtually impossible for me to stand on the outside of the tool and set this properly. Okay, so getting yourself in the good habits now of positioning properly both tool and body is going to make you more of an effective entry firefighter. My name's Paul DeBartolomeo. I'd like to thank Deputy Chief Matt Palmer and the members of the Stanford Fire and Rescue Department for allowing us to shoot these videos at their training facility. And I'd like to thank you for watching another segment of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes.